For centuries, dogs have been adored in life, literature, and as we'll see today, in art. We're so happy to be here at the Bruce Museum in Greenwich, Connecticut, and we'll be talking to Robin Garr. Hi, Robin. How Hi. are you? So nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for letting us come. I think our, our art and style viewers are really going to enjoy this great exhibition on dogs. Definitely. If you like art, you'll like it. If you like dogs, you'll love it. That sounds great. Now, tell me what the, do what the show is titled. It's called Best in Show appropriate enough, dogs and art from the Renaissance to today. And we span about 300 years of the dog being the star of these various pieces of uh, uh, art that we're going to see today. We have this wonderful piece by Franz Snyders, um, and this is on loan from the Prado Museum, so we're very excited about that. Um, and the Dutch, as you said, dogs were favored in their art as something that they painted a lot, and one of the reasons they did that was so that they could depict uh, moral scenes. So these were paintings that you were meant to hang in your house and contemplate the moral issues of the day and the philosophical morals. And this is obviously about greedy dogs. Is bad about overeating? Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, these dogs have broken into the house and jumped up on the dining room table and they're making off with tonight's dinner, um, breaking their fine import china and overturning the fruit basket and uh, just behaving very badly. I think I've had a dog or two in my life that got away <laughs> with my dinner. <laughs> yeah, maybe not in the same way. Yeah, but and it's, uh, it's meant for you to piece. think about greed and, and you know, get be don't get between a man and, or a dog and his bone. Um, those kind of sayings were very popular in the day and it, and it gave the Dutch something to talk about. So Robin, I understand that that piece from the Prado was owned by a king. Uh, there must have been other dogs that whose portraits were done. Absolutely. We have an extraordinary pets, right? extraordinary example, example here uh, by one of the portrait painters in the court of Louis XIV. Mm. Um, this was Alexander Francois de Spore, who painted the royal family. But here we have a picture of a royal hunting dog. Uh, this must have been one of the king's favorite dogs. Um, I understand Louis XIV had about 300 people working in his kennel just to take care of his dogs. Oh for my his, gosh. So for him to single out a dog wow. and have the dog's portrait painted and the name of the dog is on the portrait. So we know this must have been a very special uh, dog in the court of Louis XIV. Hunting hound actually is probably more appropriate. Um, and this is when you very first start to see this. Um, in, in the very early uh, 18th century of dogs, being immortalized in portraits. Again, a very human face, I think, doing a very human... Very much so. We yeah. Now we're going to start to get into seeing paintings as we move on through the centuries where humans have always wanted to put human feelings and emotions onto their animals. It's called anthropomorphization. And here you have it in its ultimate form here um, as this is a portrait of an extraordinary musical dog by Philip Rhein Nagel. And uh, clearly we've interrupted this dog in her recital. Yes. <laughs> and I've been told that the music on the piano is God Save the Queen. Oh, of course. He's an I English will leave painter. That. Right? <laughs> That's correct. So, and there's some question as to whether the dog paws could actually play the keys, but we'll leave that to your imagination. <laughs> so, Robin, I know while some of these dogs were busy playing the piano, there must have been other dogs that were maybe uh, hunting or hunting, working. working. Uh -huh. Definitely working. Do we move we into that category? Yes. We have a whole section devoted to fantastic, great hunting dogs, uh, starting with this amazing portrait by Constance Troyon, a French mm. painter, um, of a hound in action. Boy, uh, is yes, at the moment. Um, and Troyon has done an amazing job um, not only capturing this dog at the moment when he sort of spots his prey and is, start to, is starting to go into point mode. Yeah, it's like he's catching the scent, right. isn't he? But yeah. like all, you know, he would have been a great Hollywood director because we have the Hollywood scene here. We have this horrible, terrific storm coming across the plain and, you know, just about, you can almost hear the lightning getting ready to crack. Yeah. And it just intensifies the whole moment. And you become the hunter here. Absolutely. Walking with the dog. You take on the role of hunter as viewer here. Um, 